What's up, this Truth the Barber Artist, and you're listening to the Whole Truth Podcast. Welcome. So I got a special show for everyone today. I'm going to have a guest on later. I'm going to have the owner of Cutmasters NYC, Neil. He's going to be on the show later to discuss what he's been going through as a barbershop owner and what you can do as an owner and his opinion about what's going to happen in the future to the industry of barbering. Yeah, so we're going to be discussing that. It should be cool. Make sure you don't go anywhere. All right, so let's get it popping. Rob Gronkowski comes out of retirement. This is interesting. So he retires, and then he comes out of retirement to rejoin the New England Patriots and then requests a trade. He requested a trade to go play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He wants to rejoin Tom Brady. Of course, most of you may already know Tom Brady is also with the Patriots. Signed a two-year contract. And Gronkowski requested a trade from New England to the Buccaneers, and they gave it to him. They said, sure. So they traded him to um, the Buccaneers, and now he is officially a part of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and will be playing together with Tom Brady. So the last time I saw Rob Gronkowski, he was part of a WWE event. Who, WWE, by the way, is now considered an official essential. They're essential workers. Yes, you heard right. You heard correct. They are in the same category as the medical workers, grocery store owners, EMTs. Doctors, you name it, they're in that category. You can you can put John Zena or or whatever of these uh, wrestling superstars. You can put them in that same category as an essential. They are important now. I was reading up on that, and it says that what the WWE brings to the economy in Florida is very, very important. So they had to make them an essential. And that's why the WWE is an essential. And also, I guess, to bring entertainment to people during these times of quarantine. But yeah, Rob Gronkowski was part of the last WWE event. I think he even won a title. He won the title during the WrestleMania which by the way was done with no fans so it was very weird because I've been watching wrestling ever since I was a kid I grew up watching Saturday night Saturday night's main event and I'll never forget I used to stay up 11 30 12 o'clock because Saturday night's main event used to come on late and I don't know why they tortured kids like that, because they knew we wanted to watch Hulk Hogan. So they used to play Saturday night's main event late. I used to wake up for school tired the next day. Uh, Sunday school, that is. And uh, yeah, because I, I was forced to go to church on Sundays and we stay, have to get up very early. And of course, Saturday night's main event was on Saturday. But in any case, um, yeah. So I grew up watching wrestling and I've never seen an event where there was no fans. Especially a WrestleMania. I can never picture a WrestleMania being with no fans. That's just something that's unheard of. And it's like you're watching wrestling 
in a quiet enclosed space i mean it wasn't enclosed it was an arena but it was just like quiet like an eerie quiet when you're watching these wrestling events and that's what wrestlemania was this year but yeah rob gronkowski held his own and won the title and now he wants to jump back into the nfl And join, rejoin Tom Brady. Now, I'm not going to say I didn't like watching these guys play together in New England. I think it's uh, Rob Gronkowski is arguably the best tight end in NFL history. He had some health issues. And that's what forced him to retire, I believe. His body was breaking down and he was forced to retire now I think Tom Brady has a couple more years a few, few more years in him I think he could compete at a high level they got some some good receivers down there in Tampa Bay and I think him and Rob Gronkowski are definitely going to hook up and do something special in Tampa Bay when are we going to see it? I'm not sure. Now, maybe next season they might start up the NFL and do what the WWE is doing, uh, run the games with no fans. That should be interesting. I'd like to see maybe run the games with no fans and at least put some sound effects in there, you know. Play some uh, crowd sound effects during a touchdown make it make it more exciting make it interesting because i tell you watching the wrestling with no fans it just kind of took a little bit of the the excitement out of watching the event i don't know it just was it's a it was a different experience i would have i would even be happy with sound effects it doesn't have to be a real crowd just give me the sound effects i'll be happy with that but i'm real interesting i'm real interested in watching Tom Brady and uh, Gronkowski play together on a different team. That's going to be very interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see them under a different coach, in a different system, in a different uniform, just all around. It's going to be fun to watch. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that whenever it happens. That was a great pickup by Tampa Bay. I'd like Edelman to come along too. That'd be good. That'd be good to see. I know Edelman's looking like that kid who can't go outside and play. He wants to. He wants to go play with his friends. But he he, he can't. He just signed a contract with um, the Patriots. I believe he also has a two-year contract or... No, I'm sorry. I'm mistaken. I think his contract runs out in 2021. Yeah, he has one more year. And then from there, he can decide what he wants to do. So, yeah, that'd be that'd be crazy if Edelman also decides to come over to Tampa Bay. That'd be something to watch. I don't know what the hell's going on over there with New England. I mean, obviously, if you got these great players and they still got some game in them, why not try your best to keep them? I mean, if they still have ability, why start rebuilding now? But it's going to be interesting to see how Belichick and the Patriots deal with not having Brady and Gronkowski. They, you know, they could they could move on. They did just fine without him last season but just to see how they get along without Tom Brady and that's going to be interesting to watch but I'm looking forward to the NFL season I'm looking forward to the NBA season and just sports in general I'm looking forward to just sports coming back I'm a sports fan so 
Love my basketball. Love my football. Baseball is my third favorite. But yeah, looking forward to seeing Tom Brady and Gronkowski come together in the NFL. That's going to be something to watch. And speaking of something to watch, Timbaland and Swiss Beats came out with the IG Live battle concept called Versus. And what it is, is DJs and MCs battling on IG Live, track for track. Yeah. So, I actually, I'm a fan of the old school. And I've been hearing about this versus thing a lot. So I said, you know what, let me check it out. So, the other day, I saw a post saying that the RZA from Wu-Tang was going to battle DJ Premier. And I said, what? I got to see that. I got to see that. So I went to DJ Premier's Instagram and at the time that they said it was, I believe it was seven o'clock. And I logged on and I went into his IG live, into his stories, and clicked into the IG live. And I saw him and RZA there. And I was just like amazed. I said, wow, this is sort of like a dream come true. This is like one of the things you could imagine only... And you really wouldn't see it in real life. So I had heard that there was already a battle that happened before that one. Which was Manny Fresh versus Scott Storch. And a lot of people said that Scott Storch used material that wasn't his. So Manny Fresh was pretty much saying that he deserved to win. But, you know, that's besides the point. I would have had to watch that and just, you know, I don't know the politics of who made what beat, you know, precisely behind the scenes. But, hey, these guys know better than I do because they were there. But in any case, I was there watching the RZA go up against DJ Premier which happens to be one of my favorite DJs of all time. And the RZA started it off. And I tell you, man, these guys were going for... It was it was over an hour. They were going, they were going at it back and forth, hit for hit. And everything they were playing... It was like, oh, wow, man, they were going at it. I tell you, you guys had to watch that. I'm pretty sure you can still watch it on YouTube. If you if you guys have time and you want to see this battle, I, it's a must see. Go to YouTube, search RZA versus DJ Premier, IG Live or whatever the case is. I'm sure it's going to be on there. Versus, you can also search uh, DJ Premier versus the RZA on Versus, Timbaland and Swiss Beats versus. This is an awesome concept. I love it. It's fun to watch. You're going to hear some great music. And just to see them in the same place going up against each other is amazing. I think this is great. And, you know, towards the end... I think it was 20 tracks versus 20 tracks. So it was 20, one guy plays 20, the other plays 20, you know, one track after the other. Like, I play a track, you play a track. But after it was all over, they kept going. You know, DJ Premier said, hey, man, we got stuff here that we could keep going all night. But 
it's up to you, dog. He told Rizza, it's up to you. We could keep going or we could stop now. And then Rizza was like, you know what? Once my wife says it's over, then I'll, you know, I'll stop. But let's keep going. They kept going. DJ Primo was like, oh, you got something? I got something. Uh, they were talking about releasing unreleased stuff. So I think they each had something that was unreleased also. And they, they were playing it. They dropped it during this online battle and it was amazing so if you guys are a fan of hip hop definitely watch that towards the end uh, people were chiming in their opinions on this live and they were just saying you know what nobody you can't even say that somebody won it's just hip hop hip hop won you know that's how good this battle was Two heavyweights. You know, it it was definitely a draw. I think it was a draw. They each had bangers. They they both were coming out with some... Some heavy... Some heavy hitters. And... It's definitely fun to watch. So if you can check out that battle... Definitely check it out. I highly recommend it. If you're a fan of hip-hop... And you want to see a great... A great battle... Definitely check that out. So everybody's been asking me, hey, Truth, how you been dealing with this whole quarantine thing? I hate it. (laughs) I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I can't go out uh, to the places I like. Um, A lot of people are gaining weight during this quarantine. I lost a couple of pounds. I'm not able to go to my favorite restaurants anymore. I love Italian food. My favorite Italian restaurants are closed. They're not even delivering. And yeah. And let's not even talk about shooting skits or filming skits. You know, a lot of people don't want to interact with other people during these times, which is understandable. I'm one of them. You know, a lot of people have been hitting me up to do collaborations. And, you know, in case some of you don't know, I'm an Instagram comedian. Uh, you can find me uh on at Truth the Barber Artist, one word, Truth the Barber Artist. And yeah, I'm an Instagram comedian. And so I haven't been going out filming much with other people, but um, I've still been filming content. But I tell you, it's tough. It's tough for Instagram comedians right now to do our thing and go out there and collaborate with people. But we got to get creative during these times. We got to get creative. And so I've I just basically been trying to stay busy, just trying to stay busy, working on my content, doing some research and studying because, uh, you know, being that I am a teacher in the barber industry and uh, I also have to stay sharp, I have to stay sharp. You can't fall off your knowledge and there's always something that you can learn. So I try and stay on top of that. Yeah, that's basically what I've been doing. But I have a lot of barbers that message me on my social media. I have friends that are barbers, and they also message me, or they call me. So I know a lot about the stuff that's going on out there. A lot of what these uh, businesses are going through, what barbers are dealing with. They don't have many options out there. Some of them don't have many options and they have to go out and do house calls. They got to do what they got to do. So, you know, I'm very amazed at the response I've been seeing from the mayor and the governor and the president. I'm very amazed at the response that I've been seeing. It's not good. It's not good. I mean, I can tell you that this uh, social distancing, in my opinion, doesn't work 100%. doesn't work as much as people think it does. I mean, everybody says six feet. I read somewhere it's 27 feet. So six feet is not enough. And one thing that I never hear any of the politicians say... I don't know why, but they're afraid to say the word is airborne. 
this is an airborne virus, but nobody says that. Airborne meaning you can breathe it in, which is, I think, the majority of people, is how they get it. And if it's in the air, it can also go in your eyes. So come on, what's going on, man? Why doesn't anybody want to say airborne? Somebody say it. You know, everybody's always they're only talking about washing their hands. They're only talking about using uh, disinfectant sprays and all that. But nobody says it's airborne. I don't know why. I mean, there was six people at a basketball game. At a college or high school basketball game. Yeah, high school. High school basketball game or, or I don't know, one of those elementary school. I don't know. It was school. And there were six people sitting in the bleachers, I think three uh, three levels apart, uh, three sec- three, yeah, three levels apart, and on the bleachers, and all six of them, all six of them caught the corona. So don't tell me that's from them not washing their hands. That has to be from something that was airborne, air born I'm going to say it again so the politicians whoever hears this can hear it air born congratulations you played yourself so I'm very disappointed that this hasn't been a, a topic of urgency which is it's airborne I mean everybody knows they have to wear a mask Everybody knows they have to wear a mask. But do they really know why? Do they really know how this thing travels? Do they really know that it stays in the air for two minutes? I don't know. That's a very... That's a very... Interesting topic that our leaders don't want to talk about. And what's up with these people protesting? They're protesting. They want every everything to start over, everything the lockdown to end. And yeah, they're protesting pretty much because they want the lockdown to end in many states. Michigan being one of them. And they're protesting, which is crazy. I mean, do they see what's going on out here in New York? Do they see that there's five, six, seven hundred people dying a day? I just heard the other day that a thousand people died in one day. Which is ridiculous. I mean, this is nowhere near over. It's going to be a long road, but it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Eventually, everything is going to go back to normal, and it's going to get better. But it's going to take some work. It's going to be a while. And we all have to work together. But I'm really... I'm really saddened for my my friends and just people that I'm I'm cool with in the industry just the fact how much everyone loves what they do how much they love being a barber they love cutting hair it's really it's really saddening to see them not being able to do what they want to do I mean it's just something that just stopped abruptly you know, barbering is one of the professions that was hit the hardest from this crisis. And now we have to deal with the reality. As as barbers in the barber industry, we have to deal with the reality that things are going to be different now. We, we have to take precautions once we do start cutting hair again, wearing the proper PPE equipment um, 
and to serve his clients. But as long as this virus is out there, there's still a risk. No matter how many precautions you take, there's still a risk. I just heard today that Georgia is allowing the barbershops to open, of course, with limitations. They can only work by appointment only. And no, they can't take walk-ins, only appointments. And the clients have to have special documentation from their employers saying that they have to get a haircut to meet the requirements of their job. So yeah, that's interesting. And the barbers have to collect those that documentation and keep it for their records. Now, I don't know how true this is, but if that is true, that to me is still not worth it. That to me is still not worth it because you're limited on who you can cut. You're limited on who you can service and the money that you can make. And you're putting yourself at a risk. I mean, if you're dealing with people who are an essential, then most likely, I'm sure a lot of them have been exposed. Maybe not infected, but they have been exposed. And there's always the chance that you will service someone who's been infected. So that would be something that every business owner would have to think about. Is it worth the risk? All right, I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll be back with the owner of Cutmasters NYC, Neil. So don't go anywhere. Hey, this is Truth the Barber Artist. If you're enjoying this podcast, please drop a like, a comment, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And hit that little bell. That way, every time I drop something new, you guys will be notified. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. And this is Truth the Barber. I am back from break. And uh, the next thing we're going to be talking uh, to a barbershop owner. So I am here with the owner of Cut Masters NYC, Neil. Neil, how you doing? You there? I'm doing great. Nice to talk to you, Truth. Uh, same here, man. So um, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, what's going on. So tell me, how has this whole shutdown experience been for you and your business well it's been uh it's been definitely interesting i'm sure everybody can uh, agree it's been unexpected right uh it definitely it's been a mix i can't say good bad um but it's uh we're trying to make the best of it uh i think we had a little bit of a of a better situation than other people had because Mm. To some degree, we could have we could see this co- coming to other uh, barbershop owners going through something similar in Europe. For me, I, I noticed I noticed uh, I was kind of keeping keeping tabs on on some barbershops in in Europe through social media. Right. And when I noticed them closing down, I kind of knew that you know what was to come. So you kind of already knew so it was is what something was about to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know to, to the degree of the reality that we're dealing with today, mm-hmm. but yeah, once I seen some uh, some social media um, accounts from barbers or barbershop owners in Europe closing up shop and making these long posts on uh, on Instagram about closing up, I was like, oh man. So what was your reaction when you first saw this stuff going down? started all the way back in maybe January when we were hearing about it going on mm-hmm. in Asia. Um, of course, I was being naive and I, you know, I thought that it would never get to here or get to the extent that it has. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, definitely, definitely surprised. But you know, we did have some, some, uh, a preview to some degree. Right, right. 
Um, what was the re the response of your barbers when you had the close down shop when they found out you were closing down? So the barbers they had a I would say a mixed uh, mixed reaction, and and we could all understand there was a lot of confusion surrounding this whole situation. Right, but. Um, I think when they seen the customers coming in and and the energy in the barber shop was a little different because there was a little bit of hesitation. Should we, you know, it was already at the point where sh should we even be giving each other that? <laughs> you know, should we right. do a fist bump, an elbow bump? So mm -hmm. I think once you know that those things started to change, um, I think the barbers started to take notice of something going on, and once. I told them, hey guys, I think we should close up. I think that's the best idea, which I, actually at the time was, was, uh, it was like a, a, an issue that I was struggling with. I was going back and forth and I didn't know if that was the right decision to do. Right, it was a tough decision, I'm sure. Oh, it was a difficult decision and I spoke to the barbers and I explained to I came to, you know, one of the barbers was particularly helpful and mm -hmm. he told me he has an, uh, you know, immunocompromised family members and I completely mm -hmm. related to that and I said yeah we can't do this anymore we got to close up right and uh they were really good they were they really came around and they were very supportive of the decision right so and then within a couple of days you started to see other people kind of going in that same direction and then eventually the governor closed down uh operation yeah do you still keep later. in touch with your barbers I definitely keep in touch with my barbers I think it's super, super important to see what they're up to. Mm -hmm. It's I think to a degree, it's the responsibility of, of the barbershop owner to kind of keep tabs and see how they're doing, especially in a time like this. Mm -hmm. so I'm definitely keeping tabs. We have a group. We have a group chat on Instagram. Oh, you do those yeah, Zoom, those Zoom, Zoom chats, the, the group chats. <laughs> yeah, man. We got the, and we got the memes going all the time. Nice, nice. So, yeah, we definitely keep in touch. Make sure everybody's okay. Make sure everybody's healthy. Everybody has everything they need. Right. That's Definitely. a good thing, Matt. Do you think that uh, the city is doing enough to help small businesses right now, though? No. No. Why, why is that? I don't. Honestly. What do you think they could do? Um, in my, you know, I'm trying to stay at home as, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But um, going down Main Street and... Uh, I mean, you know, in my neighborhood, going down the avenues in Brooklyn. Right. Um, and, then, and then speaking to people, you could already tell that some people already called it quit. A lot of businesses have already closed down. Yeah, they closed so, down permanently, right? Permanently. Some people yeah. closed up shop. They said, you know what? I'm just going to cut my losses. I'm just going to close up. I, I don't want to. So, you know, a lot of people have really large rents to pay. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking at a couple, three months of whatever, $6,000 a month rent is $18,000. I mean, we're talking about New York City. Yeah. And New York City did get hit hard. So there are businesses that have closed down. There's some businesses that definitely have closed down. Um, I also, we're hearing about, well, this is more the federal government, I believe, mm -hmm. SBA.gov. Right. We're hearing that some of the bigger companies are attempting to, to kind of take some of those funds or have already. And that that was really made for small businesses, not for big food chains, you know, big uh, companies. Definitely. But yeah, you know, I really think that the city could do more. They they told you guys to shut down, and I really I really feel I feel for you because they tell you guys to shut down, but they're not giving you the support that you need, so you can maintain you know your business. You know, right. under these uh, under these conditions, a month. Yeah, and and that time is just gonna keep piling up. Yeah, man. So, um, what do you think is the time frame? Like, uh, like well, how? I, going back to the last question, truth. I think I think that eventually we are gonna get the funding that we need. I think everything, I think we're just kind of caught off guard right now. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing that kind of happened with, with the stimulus checks. I think that they're going to sort this out and, and that, that funding will start to get um, distributed. 
to small businesses on a much faster rate. And so you I, think I they're going to fix it up? You think uh, they're going to do something? What'd you say, Truth? You think they're going to do something to to help you guys out? They're going to come out with something, a new stimulus? or? I do. I, uh, I, I definitely think that eventually they're going to help the small businesses out for sure. I do. I think that you have to, I have, I think the barbershop owners have to stay extremely diligent and have to constantly stay up to date with all the programs and all the deadlines and when you can reapply if you haven't applied. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah. So I, I believe I was talking to you a while ago and you were telling me about uh, this one loan that they had going on. Did you, did you ever apply for that? And how did that go? I'll be honest with you, I applied for everything. And I advise all barbershop owners to apply if, if they are being affected by this. And if you are in the state of New York and you are shutting down, most likely you are being affected by this financially. So uh, I, I applied for the SBA loan. There's two of them. Mm -hmm. um, there's one that's called, it, I believe, EIDL. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another one that's called a PPP, Paycheck Protection Plan or Program. Right. Um, and these are both offered by SBA, Small Business Association. And these are basically attempts to get your business going again, get some money back into your business. And, um, Did they help out? So, yeah, I have applied. I have applied. I'm still waiting. <laughs> oh, my God. So... When did when did you apply? Away. About a month ago? Maybe about three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. you would think they'd be running uh, a little quicker with this, right? I do. Yeah, I do. But uh, at the same time, it doesn't surprise me anymore. Do you think that property owners should should still be allowed to charge rent during these during this shutdown? Funny truth, I literally just spoke to my landlord. Today? Six feet away, of course. Oh, wow. Yeah, today, man. I, I, I How'd that go? I had to stay six feet away. I, uh, it went well. I went to also to just check up on him, see how he's doing, because I haven't spoken to him. I've tried to reach out to him. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I was getting a little concerned, so I, I went over there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I finally, I met up with him. We, we, like I said, we were six feet away from each other. It was actually difficult to talk. We were outside. We both have masks on. Oh, wow. We're six feet away from each other. There's car, you know, there's still noise going on between us. We're, having, we're trying to have this serious conversation about, you know, what do we do at this point? I'm trying to feel him out. And I kind of got the sense that he was a little overwhelmed by this whole situation. He mentioned that it was making him very anxious. Mm -hmm. He's an older gentleman. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of told him um, that... Uh, I'll, I'll stop by at a later time and, and uh, check in with him. Um, and I kind of told myself that I'll either do my best to give him the rent for this month or I'll give him a check for half the mm. rent for this month. And this month, I'm, I'm saying actually April. So I'm, we're 20, I'm already 22 days behind. For oh, this wow. Month. But of course, because I, yeah, it was, it was because I was also obeying, you know, like staying home trying to stay home as much as possible. Also, he wasn't picking up his phone, so I didn't want to risk going all the way over there for him not to be home. So you think That's it's fair that he's still situation. charging rent, or do you think that there should be well, some well, separate... I'll tell you what. Yeah. He looked, he looked at me and he said, don't, he said, he said, not your fault, not your fault. He said, he looked up at the sky and he said, you know, it's not, it's not your fault. It's not to blame. It's the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So... I think I think uh, every situation. This is the, really the answer to that question because mm -hmm. kind of the million dollar question for barbershop owners: mm -hmm. what, Do I pay rent? Do I not pay rent? Um, I think that it's specific to every situation, right. and you have to really put yourself in that landlord's shoes. Right. Realize that he might have a mortgage to pay. With right. Your rent money. He might be paying a mortgage. Maybe it would help for them to stop more mortgage she, payments for now. Right. Well. They should suspend everything right now, if, if you ask me. It should just be suspended. The mortgage payment should be suspended and the rent should be suspended. Right. But uh, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's, that's too much, too much. Yeah, the, the economy is already but, suffering. Uh, yeah, that's too much to ask for. But what I was saying is that you just need to really 
have a conversation with your landlord and speak to him or her and try to also understand that they're also probably going through a lot emotionally. It's mm. a very difficult situation. You never know what they're going through. Maybe they lost a loved one. So just try to find a, a common ground and, and, and try to negotiate. Say, hey, listen, obviously, you know, I haven't been making any money. The shop hasn't been open for five weeks. Mm-hmm. for a month, for six weeks, whatever that situation is. I'm, right. I don't have any intention of running away. I'd like to continue doing business in your on your property. Mm-hmm. What can we do to work this out? How can we work this out? And hopefully, hopefully, the landlord will be understanding and you guys could come to some type of agreement. I would, I think that maybe they could give, maybe the landlord could give maybe a discount and a payment plan. I think that would be... In my opinion, I think that would be a dream come true. Twenty-five percent off and a little payment plan. Yeah, that would be the, the way to do it. That sounds good. That'd be a dream come true, though. <laughs> that would be a dream come true. A lot of but property owners would we'll never do that. At the end of the day. Yep. So, uh, once barbershops open up, and first of all, when do you think? This is all going to be over. When do you think they're going to let shops open up again? What's your prediction? Well, as of now, today is the 22nd of April, right? Mm-hmm. They're saying, they're saying, I believe, May 15th, correct? Okay, or that's what I've heard, yes. April 29th or April 30th. I've been hearing some rumors about they're 20? extending it to July. They're thinking about July. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know. It really depends on. I have. I, I. don't really know. I think my best guess would be somewhere in between June, or maybe the, maybe the end of May. And do you think once because they open up? Saying, yeah, go ahead. May 15th in, in Los Angeles. I'm sorry. They're, they're saying May 15th in Los Angeles. Los Angeles doesn't have as much interaction and shoulder to shoulder action as you know. They don't take trains like we do. They're not living in in these vertical sky rise buildings. Mm-hmm. They don't, they're not as in close proximity to each other as much as we are, and their day is May 15th. So I'm figuring maybe, who knows, May 30th, maybe June. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, and the, when when that happens, when the lockdown is over and barbershops are allowed to open, do you think, do you expect a big rush? Or do you think people are gonna be afraid and still cautious? I think people are Right. And I think that the barbers need to be afraid and cautious. And I think that's the key. It's basically the same thing that we just went through mm-hmm. before we, we closed down. Right. We got to do that again. We, we got to integrate, like, responsibly. Right. We got we to gotta reintegrate responsibly. You can't just take all the customers again. No, you got to you gotta create some type of... Safety measures. Some type of... Uh, Exactly, some type of new method that's gonna be appropriate for this for the current situation. Gotcha. You can't treat it like a cash grab, you know. Right, right. You still got to take the proper precautions. Absolutely, and I think that going into this, it's interesting because I think we all had a preview of how we're gonna deal with it when it when when this is over. Meaning that we were already towards. Towards the, by March, by um, yeah, by March, by the beginning of March, everybody was pretty much wearing gloves. Everybody was like throwing their station. Yep. We were mm-hmm. switching out capes every customer. I was switching out capes every customer in the barbershop. We, we were doing as much as we could. Lysol. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were practicing as much um, sanitation as possible, as they say, in the industry. Yeah, and, I even uh, I even had made a, a video about how to showing barbers how to uh, sanitize everything I've during the that. coronavirus. That's that's great. Yep. So very important. Yeah, it, it, things are gonna be different once shops open up. Uh, the old way that we once knew is not gonna be that way for a while. A lot of Correct. things a lot of things need to happen before that. Uh, can can go back to the way it used to be. I think maybe a vaccine or a cure yeah, is the first step. Yeah, also, yeah. proper testing. Because I think to a degree, there, there will be people that are going to be 
um, constantly, which is going to, they're going to be, I hate to use the word traumatized, but there's definitely going to be a percentage of people that will not go back to the, I feel like some people are going to continuously wear masks and some people are still going to practice social, uh, social distancing. And That's true. I hope not. That's true. Uh, what do you think about the job the mayor's done so far? The mayor? Yeah. To be honest. Mr. Yeah, de Blasio. We don't, we, yeah, de Blasio. I had to think about who our mayor was. <laughs> I know, he hasn't been in the uh, picture, right? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a very political person, you know, that we're supposed to stay away from politics in the barbershop. But I haven't heard his name in a long time. Right. What do you think about his job that, that he's been doing, though? I mean, the fact that I haven't heard anything from him, I think that's a testament. That's pretty much. Yeah. That's it. That's what you think. I think he's not doing much. He's they haven't heard from him. Yeah. yeah. I think I. We're hearing a lot from from Governor Cuomo, and yeah. I feel like he does have a lot of power. He's been more governor. active. Yeah. I think he's been kind of really headlining this whole thing. Yeah. He's been taking a little bit more control than the actual mayor, which is sad. True. So, okay, so right now, if they told you today that you can open your shop, would you open it right now? Absolutely not. It's too early. You think it's you think it's too early? I I didn't I didn't wait I I do. I didn't wait for them to, to tell me to close my store to close my store. I closed my store when I felt uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. As soon as I felt uncomfortable, it started it started running through my mind. And uh, when I just said to myself, I, I don't feel comfortable operating like this, I closed down. And it happened to be a week before we got the the um, the, the order to close up shop. So basically what I'm saying is I'm just going to wait till me and my team feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. And we're going to discuss it. And when we, when we feel comfortable... We're going to come back and we're going to come back the way that we think is appropriate for the situation. You're probably the only owner, the only barbershop owner that I know that has that closed down before the order was given. Everybody else was trying to drag it till the end. They were pushing it. It's funny you say that truth because I had a lot of time to think about it. As I said, it was a very difficult decision. Mm-hmm. And I said to myself, you know, we're, as barbershop owners, we're, we're trained mentally. We're, we have blinders on. We're trained to generate money, generate money, make money, make money, make money. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard to, to press the brakes. It's almost it's almost against our nature, you know. Not mm-hmm. make money. Oh, you know, like I'm. So it was it was a, a really a, an important time where I had to really reassess what a barbershop owner is, mm-hmm. and actually what a barbershop owner is first and foremost. Is somebody that keeps the barbers, the clients, the barber's family, mm-hmm. the client's family safe. Safety first. Right. It's not about making money. M- money is secondary. And that's the thing that a lot of barbers don't realize. Your, your health should come first. You know, but some some barbers out there in this situation, you know, they have no choice. But what do you think about these barbers who are cutting hair during quarantine? I think that every single barber has their own situation and their own needs. And maybe maybe they're living by themselves. Maybe they're, you know, it's, it's really up to them. Also, their financial needs might be different. Mm. It's really up to them to make that judgment call. And if it's as contagious as they say it is, I would say it's probably not a, a good decision if you have loved ones that are susceptible to this virus at home or in close proximity to you. Right, but there's some barbers out there that are, that are, you know, they're kind of split. Some some groups of barbers are saying, hey, these guys are uh, prolonging the process. They're going out there. They're probably going to get people sick. They're going to get sick. And then other barbers are saying, you know, it's our choice. We we got to uh, support our, ourselves and our families. Please get off our backs. So, right. who do you think is right in, in that in that scenario? I'm going to say it's still the barber's judgment call to, to make. So it, it depends on the situation. And 
I will say that I don't feel like many barbers really understand what proper protection is during this situation. And I think that a lot of them have a false sense of security. I don't think they really understand what co- like cross-contamination is. Mm-hmm. Just because you're wearing gloves doesn't make you safe. No, it doesn't. No. And well, you I have to wear a certain type of mask, especially in, in close proximity to a client. There's a certain type of mask you have to wear. Yeah, and how do you take the mask off? And how do you dispose of the mask? And how do you dispose of the gloves? Right. You know? Right. Did, you, did you scratch your head during the haircut? You right. know? I don't know. A lot of things I, to I take into account. It's a, it's a really great idea. I think signing up for unemployment would probably be the, the best idea. Yeah. Try to get some assistance from the government, pick up a side hustle, try to sell something online, work on your weaknesses. If you don't have a good social media presence, work on your social media presence. If you're not selling stuff online, try to work on creating a website where you can maybe do a little bit of retail. This is a really good time to work on your weaknesses. But if you have to go out there, if you have absolutely no choice, be as safe as possible and wear all the protection you can. Absolutely. Be, be educated about how you go about yeah. Well, what advice would you have for barbershop or salon owners during these difficult times? I would say, number one, you have a job to do. If you have barbers that are, that are relying on you, if you have customers that are relying on you, you got to keep your hopes up. You got to keep your spirit up. Apply for every single program that you could possibly apply for. Mm -hmm. Something that a lot of barbershop owners are are not doing is I think you should open a claim with your insurance company. Mm. They're most most likely going to deny you. But if anything changes, they might reopen the claim and you might be entitled to some money, some compensation. Because if you're not in the barbershop for a month Mm. or maybe a month and a half, Something might get damaged. Some, you know, I, I, I would say open up an insurance claim. Something that I don't hear enough people talking about. Mm. Um, I got the advice from from my insurance broker mm-hmm. in an email, and I said, you know what, that's a good idea. I'm gonna insur- I'm open a claim, and even if I don't get anything from that claim, it could also serve as some type of evidence that I was trying making an attempt to to make a you claim. Know, Basically, basically say to make a claim to basically say, "Hey, listen, this is where my my barber shop went downward." Right. What about communicating with the property owner? You think that helps? I think it's extremely important. I think you should definitely, like I said before, talk to your landlord, communicate with them, have a calm conversation, and see if you could come up with some type of compromise. All right, so is there any type of tips or any other uh, things that owners can do uh, maybe for to help them get money or to help them get some type of funding? Is there anything else that you know of? Definitely. I think it would be a great idea to do some crowdsourcing and uh, open a GoFundMe page. GoFundMe, okay. I was, I, yeah, yeah, I was initially hesitant, hesitant about doing that. I, I was... I was kind of on the fence about it, mm-hmm. but I definitely think you should go out there and uh, start a GoFundMe page if you're a barbershop owner. If there might be some of your clients that you had a good good time, good experience, gave them a good haircut, mm-hmm. and they might not be having such a hard time, they could donate some money. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really good option, and maybe it could hold you down in, in between while, uh, while the SBA is trying to give us some money. Mm, okay. Yeah, you could offer it to your friends, your family, your customers, your clients, any, anybody who's willing to chip in and help out. 10 bucks, 20 bucks, you'd be surprised. Some people might give you 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Right, right. You never know. You might have had, a, had an impact on somebody. They might have really liked the way you cut their hair. They really enjoyed your, the experience that they had in the barbershop and said, you know what, these guys are struggling. I'm going to hook them up. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, right now these are times that uh, you can't you can't be embarrassed, you know, to ask for help. You know, you got to go out there and try and Absolutely. get 
whatever you know assistance you, you can get especially right now definitely i think that if you're a barbershop owner you're also obligated to to try every single avenue possible because it's, it's not only about you it's also about the barbers that you took under your wing mm -hmm. that's true so um is there anybody you want to shout out before we go we definitely definitely got to give a big shout out to all the essential workers out there that are still working all of them, too many to name, truck drivers, sanitation workers, grocery store clerks, everybody that's still outside right now, doctors, nurses. Definitely, big shout out to them for, for doing their job. Keeping the city going. Nice. Well, Neil, I want to thank you for being our guest and thank you for giving us your insight on your situation. Um, Neil is the owner of, once again, Cut Masters NYC. It's located at 419 uh, Avenue P in Brooklyn. Uh, definitely go check them out when all this is over. Neil, thank you for being on the show. And uh, hopefully we can hook up for some Thanks more for skits, man. Let's do it. <laughs> me, man. All right, man. Take care, Neil. Be good, man. Bye. All right. You've been listening to The Whole Truth Podcast. Thank you all for listening. Make sure to subscribe and enjoy your day.